Okay, in this video, we'd like to derive an equation. Derive an equation. What type of equation would we like to derive? Well, how about a guitar? best drawing of a guitar there you go and of course we have some strings on the guitar and what we'd like to know is here's a string um, any old string one in particular we can have things like regarding a string itself the velocity of the string in other words the speed of the waves okay so speed of the waves made by the string once it's been plucked okay so how it resonates if you like the speed of resonance uh, we could have its mass okay strings have mass um, L is the length of the string that's going to be important we think and the tension of the string which we could measure as f possibly as a force or tension so the tension is obviously influenced by how much you twist uh, clockwise the fret area here okay right so Let's try to think about all this lot in terms of dimensional analysis then. So speed of waves it's a velocity, call it curly V. Okay, the dimensions of velocity are well it's usually meters per second, surely, okay? Uh, we go back up to our table. Let's just confirm that. So we're looking for speed or velocity. And switch to red. Go up here. We can see velocity is LT to the minus 1. Okay. So let's have LT to the minus 1 there. We also indicated, so yeah, we've done that one. Now we're looking for mass here. Mass, well, we can give that the symbol M, and we were looking for the dimensions of M, and that's nice and easy because that's at the top of our reference table. Mass is up here, and it's about Math is just M, a simple one. Okay, so we bring mass down and it's capital M. String length. Okay, the length of the string. Let me just call it length. Uh, so the dimensions of length L. Well, length is just length so we just use L nice simple one okay the tension in the string is the next one we maybe want to look at so that's a force of course there's a force applied to the string in this case it's a tension so it's being stretched and um, we look for dimensions of force we can see that here over there, there it is ml t to the minus two. Okay, uh, get rid of the red ml t to the minus two. We're going to call it force f. Okay, and now what we'd like to do is say. We would like to generate um, or derive 
an equation to derive an equation for the speed of the waves. So this thing here, we want to derive an equation that says v equals blah 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 in terms of m, l, and f. We haven't got a clue how this equation is going to be in terms of its format, whether it's got squares or square roots or cubes, we don't know, but we're just about to find out what such an equation may look like. And this is the power of dimensional analysis. Okay, so let's have a go. We're going to say something in the form, the velocity, this thing up here, is equal to mass to the power we don't know, so let's call it A. Length to the power we don't know, so let's call it B. And the force F we don't know, some power, so let's call it C for now. So if we insert those dimensions and do a little bit of equating indices, we should be able to derive a formula for the velocity of the string once it's been plucked with a fret, okay? So, let's go. Here's how we're going to proceed. We're going to replace these guys here with the dimensions, okay? So velocity is L T to the minus one is equal to M to the A. Okay, so it's just M to the A. Okay, so that one's done, that one's done. L is just L, so that's going to be L to the B. Okay, that's done. Force F to the power C. Well, here's the dimensions of force. All to the power C, so the whole thing needs to be raised to the power C. So here's where you need to use brackets, okay? So we can have M, L, T to the minus two, all to the power C. Okay, let's try multiplying things out now, make life a little bit easier for ourselves. So we have L T to the minus one equals M to the A, let's just dip this bit here, L to the B, it's that bit there. Then we've got this M in the brackets here is going to have to go be raised to the power C. Okay, so M to the C. So M appears twice, that's fine. L here is L to the 1. Stick a 1 in there if you want. L to the 1, 1 times C is just C, so L to the C. And then we've got T to the minus 2, all to the power C. And that's just going to be T to the minus 2C. We can tidy this up a little bit further. And we can say, let me just move it to the left now, L T to the minus one equals, have a look at our M's, here's one, here's another one. So M to the A times M to the C, we, we obviously have to add the indices, so it's going to be M to the A plus C. Have a look at our L's. Here's an L. Here's another L. Add those powers or indices again. L to the B plus C. Like so. Finally, we just have a solitary T here. So we have T to the minus 2C. Okay. Now it is time make the next step and the next step is to equate indices equate indices 
and here's a guide for the notation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to equate the indices of L. So we write that mathematically like this, L colon. Equate the indices of L. So everywhere where you see an L, we're going to form an expression from the powers. Okay, so just looking in the L world at the moment, well, here's an L on the left. That's got a one there. Okay, it's just an invisible one. So we can say one, ignore T, put the equal sign in always, ignore M, look at L, look at the powers of L only, write in what you see, B plus C, move across further, that's T, we're ignoring that, we're just looking at L. And we have an expression. Okay, equating indices of L, we have one equals B plus C. Uh, let's give that a tag. One expression, one. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for M. So we're going to look at the indices for M. Over on the left here, we don't see an M. So there's nothing there for M. So we write zero. Put the equal sign in. Uh, here we can see there's an M with an A plus C power in there. So we're equating those indices. A plus C goes in. This is L stuff, ignore. This is T stuff, ignore. And we can call that expression two. <clears throat> Finally, we're going to equate indices for T. So we look on the left, we can see T's powers. Oh, minus one, okay, minus one, equal sign, ignore the M, ignore the L, what's the power on the T, minus 2C, minus 2C, and we can call up expression three, and we can say, it's fairly obvious from expression three, okay, so we can say, from three, we have minus one equals minus two C. Okay, so you divide both sides by minus two, you get C on its own. You have minus one over minus two equals C. Therefore, obviously C must be equal to minus over minus, they cancel, it becomes plus a half. Half is 0 0.5. Okay. Now, let's call that maybe expression four, even though it's small, it's useful. Helps your notation. If I go into sub expression four into, let me think now, which one's going to be the most useful? How about this one here, expression because if I know what C is, I replace that with a half, I think we should be able to find A. Okay, so substitute 4 into expression 2. And that's going to give us, so let's rewrite expression 2 here. 0 equals A plus C, or C is a half, plus 0.5. Therefore, move the 0.5 over the other side, and then you isolate A, which is what we want. Therefore, A must be equal to minus 0.5. Okay, and keep our notation strategy intact. Let's call that expression five. <coughs> then we can sub or again, this time, into one. And here's one, looking here, we can write one equals B, which we don't know yet, plus 
C. And we know C is 0 0.5. Therefore, B is equal to, get this term here, move it over there, make it negative, 1 minus 0 0.5. Let 1 take away 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. B equals 0 0.5. Call that 6 if you want to. We don't really need 5 and 6. Um, tagged in that way but you may have done if you had a, a longer expression so it's a good policy to do that so then what you then have is v the velocity of the guitar string is going to be possibly some constant we call it k it could be one it could be two pi it could be or it could be anything we don't really know at this stage okay but it's some constant times. We've got all these things we have up here in red. That lot there. This is where we're looking. And we had M. Let's go back and change that to white. M to the A. Okay. What was the value for A? Minus 0.5. that bit we had l to the b l to the b we now know that b is plus 0 0.5 and up here again the last bit was f to the c f to the power c and we knew that c had what value Okay, so we look over here, here it was, 0 0.5. Okay, last bit. You need to remember from previous videos that if you raise something to the power 0 0.5, what you're doing is you're taking its square root. If you're raising something to the power minus 0 0.5, you're taking 1 over its square root. So effectively, what we have then, on our last line, we have the velocity of the guitar string or the speed of the wave created by vibrating that string is some constant k times the square root of L's to the 0 0.5. Okay, so that's fine. For L, F is positive 0 0.5 as well. So that's the force of the tension. And the M is on a negative 0 0.5. So that goes at the bottom of the square root. And we just put M in there. And it appears that we have generated our own equation. Okay, so the velocity of a guitar string is some constant times the square root of length times the tension over the mass and that is correct okay thanks for watching and listening